Hello everyone, welcome to video 11 of chapter 4. In this video, we start chapter 4.5, the complementary slackness theorem. Okay, let's get started. Let's consider the following setting. We have a max problem and a mean problem. For the max problem, we maximize z equal c dot x subject to the constraint ax less than b, x bigger than zero. For the mean problem, which is the dual of the max, we have minimizing v equal v dot y subject to a transpose y bigger than c, y bigger than zero. So we know these two problems are dual of each other. So recall in chapter 4.4, where we covered the duality theorem, we went through a couple of corollaries. And let's recall some of them. So recall corollary 2, which states in the above setting that if x naught and y naught are two feasible solutions, then I have the following. b dot y naught minus c dot x naught is b minus ax naught dot y naught plus at y naught minus e dot x naught. So here, x naught and y naught are two feasible solutions for the max and the mean problems, respectively. And the meaning of this term, b minus a x naught, would be the slack this constraint has with x naught as the feasible solution. And uh, a transpose y naught minus c would be the slack this constraint has at the feasible solution, why not? Okay, so let's recall another corollary, number three. It says now, if for two, for two feasible, feasible solutions, solution, x, x naught and y naught, I also have the following, c dot x naught equal b dot y naught, then these two are optimal points of each of the max and mean solution and the max value of z would be c dot x naught and the minimum value of v will be b dot y naught and they equal to each other. Now combining these two corollaries we have the following observation that is at the optimal solution points x naught and y naught then we must have the following. If this equals zero, which is this equal that, then the right hand side must equal zero. So we will have this equal to zero. Okay, and this has some very interesting consequences. So let's first recall, as we mentioned, what is this term and what is this term? So we know this term here is the slack so which is bigger than or equal to zero. And the second term is the slack of this at the feasible solution, so it's also bigger than or equal to zero. And furthermore, x naught and y naught are two feasible solutions, so they are also non-negative. So all these four terms, those four vectors are non-negative. Okay, so since they are all non-negative, then we must have the following. That is, this dot that will be non-negative, and this dot that is non-negative. And if they add up to be zero, then both of them must be zero. So we will have this dot is zero, and this dot is zero. Okay, so this discussion leads to the following statement. We call this a theorem, 
complementary slackness theorem. The statement is the following. Suppose x not y not are feasible solutions of the max and mean problem, respectively. Then, x not y not are optimal solution point if and only if I have this dot is zero and this dot of these two vectors is also zero. Now, let me point out something that's even more particular about this result. So let's look at this equals zero here. So it's the inner product of two non-zero vectors. And we know all the components are non-negative, which means the dot product will contain a summation of the product of the two corresponding elements. Then that product must be zero. So which means for each component, we must either have the slack is zero or the um, feasible solution, the optimal feasible solution is zero for every component, for this part, as well as for here, I will also have the same thing. The component will be zero, all of them that I add up. So I would also have, let's say, this is the jth component for the slack is zero or the solution x not the jth component must be zero. Okay, so, and this is actually a very useful observation, and in practice, we can use it to solve many problems. Okay, now we're going to take a look at some applications of the slackness theorem. Let's take two examples. The first one is example 4.5.1 from your textbook. The statement of the problem is following. So given that... 7, 0, 3 is an optimal solution point for problem, let's call it problem 1, which is the main problem here. Minimizing this function here, subject to restricted variables and five constraints that's listed here. Okay, so it's given that this is an optimal solution and use that to find the optimal solution for the dual, which is being spelled out. So I will have five variables coming from five constraints, and I will have three constraints coming from the three variables. Okay, and you can verify that these are duals of each other. So what will be the most efficient way to solve this problem? So the problem asks you to find the optimal solution point, that is, the y values where this problem obtains its maximum. Okay, the answer takes a few steps. Let's go through them. Step one, I would like to compute the slack of problem one, the constraint there, at the optimal solution x star, which is 7 zero three okay so let's compute so the slack is a a vector it has a component for each constraint so for the first constraint would be i would take the left hand side of the constraint minus the constant because um, i have bigger than equal sign so this will give me something non-negative and if you plug in x1 star is seven x2 star zero x3 star three and you get that 3. And then you do it for the second constraint, and the third and fourth and fifth. You go through all of them. And then this is what we get. For the second one, I get 0. For the third one, I get 1. And the fourth one, I get 16. And the fifth one, I get 0. So we see that the slack is, uh, all the slack, the terms for the slack here are non-negative. And in particular, I see that S1 is non-zero, S3 is non-zero, and S4 is non-zero. Now, step two. Let now Y star with the components like this 
be the optimal solution for problem two for the dual. Then, by the complementary slackness theorem, we must have, um, since the slack for the first component is non-zero, then in the solution y it must be zero. And also the third one and the fourth one, where the slack is non-zero, the solution must be zero. So I have y1, y3, y4 star must be zero for the optimal solution. Then this simplifies a lot. And this means that the only two components in the solution that I need to figure out is the y star 2 and the y star 5. Okay, so then let's use the second half of the um, slackness theorem. Since I know that 703 is an optimal solution for 1, then I use the slackness theorem. Then the slack for the duo at the optimal solution must be 0 for where the solution is non-zero, meaning for the first and the third constraints. Okay, so we can put all these together, meaning we can now write out the first and the third constraint and put that into equal sign because there's no slack. And we can put y1, y3, y4 stars to be zero and write out the equations containing only y star 2 and y star 5. And if you do that, and this is what you get. And we see this is a system of linear equations with two unknowns and two equations, and it's not difficult to solve it. Okay, and uh, use your favorite method, and then you find the solution. Y2 star is 10, Y5 star is 6. Okay, then that means we have found the optimal solution point for um, for the dual. That is, the second entry is 10, the fifth entry is 6, and the rest is 0. So 0, 10, 0, 0, 6. That is an optimal solution for 2. If this shall be a um, exam problem, it, and you have time, it might be a wise thing to do, that is, um, to verify that this is the correct solution. So, let's do that. Okay, so let's plug in x star into the objective function of problem 1 and find the value. It's a dot product, x star dot product, the coefficient vector, and we get 114. And then I can also compute the objective function of problem 2, the dual, at y star, the one that I just computed. Since there are so many zeros, actually the computation is rather simple. And then you carry it out and you find out it's also 114. So these two numbers match each other. Okay, then you recall your favorite duality theorem. That means the x star and y star are now optimal solution points for problem 1 and 2, respectively. Then you can know for sure that you have calculated the correct answer. So you double-checked. Okay, so um, that is all for this video, and there will be another example in the next video. I hope you enjoyed it, and I'll see you next time.